got the practice shorter... out of the way. Yeah. Hi, this is Jody Wariski. Today we are going to be learning about Turn. Um, I know many of you guys use Travify or TravelJoy. This is something I think a step above, and I can't explain it as well as David and Emily can. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Turn it over to them. Sorry, <laughs> had to do it. I see what you did there. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. My name is Emily Jeremy. I lead our partnerships team here at Turn. So excited to be here. Thank you all for taking the time. Um, I will be answering questions in the chat and just answering comments. So please, please, please ask questions. Give us feedback. That is how we are building Turn. Um, so do not shy away from that. David will be kind of doing the overview and I'll be answering questions. So I'll let him introduce himself. But thank you again for taking the time. Fantastic. Well, while we're doing the intros, I will just get the screen share going here. Um, Hi, everyone. It's so good to be here. Thank you, like Emily said, for taking the time on this Monday morning after the Super Bowl. I don't know about you, but I was definitely up later last night than I, I normally am. So uh, excited to be kicking off the, the week right. Um, so my name is David Shaw. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO here at Turn. And I am really excited to be walking you through a little bit about Turn, about where the company came from, uh, and most importantly, the Turn product itself. Uh, as Emily mentioned, uh, there's two of us here today. So Emily's going to be kind of monitoring the chat. So if you have questions, feel free to just you know, drop them in the chat or because we got the Zoom you know, going on here, you can raise your hand uh, and we'll we'll try and make this uh, as interactive as possible. Um, I think that the most important thing over the next hour is that if you have questions around turn and how it could work for your business, that we answer those. So please don't hold back if you have questions. Um, some of them we may answer you know, kind of later in the demo. So we may uh, just say like, we're going to come back to that. Um, and uh, and if we don't, definitely hold us to that. But uh, we'll go ahead and, and kind of jump in. Rough oh, wait, agenda really for today. Quickly. Yeah, go ahead. So sorry, hopping in here. Um, change the chat to everyone versus just hosts and panelists. If you want everyone to see your chat and your questions, people can kind of see and see how I'm answering. And do we need Emily for this? Because since it's a meeting, I don't actually know. We're like so used to that, but I think as a meeting, does it does it not default or is it? Oh, does it? Is everyone saying everyone? I think it should default to everybody. You can tell that we're used to like webinar world where it's like, okay, you got like 15 different setup things to do, but no, this is an actual meeting. So I think everybody should be able to Never see the chat. Mind. So ignore uh, me. <laughs> and there's not Q&A. Normally part of our, our talk track yeah. is like, make sure you use the Q&A, but uh, there's no Q&A because it's an actual meeting, which is great. And it's nice <laughs> that we can actually see some people's faces. So uh, it, it's definitely nicer than feeling like we're talking to a void. So um Agenda for today, pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to do a very quick overview. Uh, we're going to spend very little time in the slides. We're a big believer that the product should speak for itself. So we'll spend most of the time actually demoing the product. Um, yeah. But to help kind of frame a little bit of like where Turn came from and what we think makes us a little bit special, we'll, we'll just share a little bit of our background uh, and then we'll jump into the product. We'll look at uh, the client form experience, so how you can use Turn to build these kind of really interactive, beautiful forms, uh, how that automatically transitions into the trip building process and kind of evolves seamlessly from a proposal to an itinerary and we'll look at turns brand new credit card authorization feature and we'll sprinkle in there some of the other kind of things that makes turn unique the ability to present your clients with options the kind of overall drag and drop simplicity of it um and we'll we'll kind of see where the questions take us from there so um as promised, a uh, quick overview. Uh, we, um, as founders, actually worked together at a technology company called Handshake before we started Turn. So our background is in building technology companies. And uh, I joined Handshake as the first employee, spent eight years there, had the opportunity to see it grow from a living room in Northern Michigan, all the way up to about 800 people, second largest professional network in the United States, live in the United States, France, Germany, uh, the United Kingdom. It was you know, an incredible ride. And we learned a lot about building uh, these kind of technology companies. And it was actually while I was uh, in the UK launching Handshake's first international office that I had a travel experience that ultimately led us to founding Turn. Um, so you can see some of the team, we, we kind of all work, work together. There's uh, Katie and Brian, who are the two other founders, Emily, who's leading partnerships. And we all use kind of this a photo from like five years ago. So it's kind of fun to, to look back on this. Um, but it was actually when I was in the UK that uh, I was you know, kind of doing a, a trip to Greece. The world had just opened up post pandemic and my wife and I kind of escaped to, to Greece uh, doing a little bit of a road trip and some island hopping. We just finished up a couple of days in Athens, rented a car, drove five hours west to the kind of west coast of the, the Greek peninsula. And we were supposed to be catching a ferry in this very ferry port. Um, but when we pulled in, we expected to see something that looked like this, a big ferry, lots of hustle and bustle. 
And instead, it was a desolate parking lot. There was nobody around. And we were like, okay, something has gone horribly wrong. Uh, sure enough, there was a schedule change. The ferry that we were supposed to be on left three hours earlier. And we ended up waiting for six hours in that parking lot for the next ferry. And it was while I was sitting in this parking lot, this is an actual picture we took, um, that I started thinking about my in-laws and the fact that they used a travel advisor to plan every one of their trips. And I thought to myself, I wonder if I had worked with Wendy, the name of their travel advisor, if I wouldn't be sitting in this parking lot right now, if we'd actually have caught the ferry that we were supposed to be on. And that got me kind of curious about the industry. There was a moment where I was like, maybe I'll become a travel advisor. Like I love travel, although you know, my ferry track record maybe suggests that that wasn't the right path. Um, and so we started talking to as many travel advisors as we could. And, and like basically what we heard was that you know, the technology that exists in the industry really hadn't evolved in the past 10, 10 years or so. Uh, certainly not to the same extent that kind of consumer travel technology had. And you would talk to advisor after advisor who said, hey, we're using separate systems for basically every workflow. We've got a separate itinerary builder, a separate CRM, a separate way to track commissions. And then my host agency or agency has a separate thing that I have to use. And it's literally just juggling all these different systems. And it's super frustrating and super time consuming. And so we started thinking to ourselves, well, we, we could build something better. And that's what we're doing with Turn. So we think about Turn as the modern operating system for travel advisors. We are building the end-to-end -end platform to power your entire travel business. And we are moving incredibly quickly. And we're able to do that uh, while maintaining quality because of our experience building technology companies. That's our superpower. Um, but the way that we approach that especially you're not necessarily coming from travel is we just have been relentless about listening, learning, understanding what you as advisors need, and then building that thing. Uh, we have low egos in terms of like what we build. We've just listened to all of you and, and what that has resulted in is I think some pretty cool innovations. So you'll see the drag and drop itinerary builder. We'll see the forms that we've built based on feedback, but we also have been able to really incorporate details that advisors have told us are incredibly important. Things like multi-currency support with daily conversions. Your clients can see, you know, you maybe have three currencies in our itinerary. What does that actually mean for them? Converted every single day. Passport parsing. So you can just upload a picture of a passport. We'll populate your CRM record from that picture automatically. So you'll see we really tried to sweat the details here and get that right. And that extends to some of the less, uh, you know, maybe exciting things, which is like, I think about as kind of this compliance suite or really focusing on how do we not only help you grow your business, but how do we protect, help you protect your business? So, uh, you really cool things with terms and conditions and tracking opt-in. We'll show that here in a moment. Credit card authorization, which is not only industry leading in terms of helping you manage credit card authorizations in a compliant way, but also magically easy from your client's perspective. We'll show this today as we go through the demo. Um, so we really think about how do we build best in class tools for you as advisors. And so excited to, to show that today. Uh, one thing I'll highlight right away for anybody watching this recording um, is that we do have a referral code. There's kind of two ways that you can save money on turn. One is if you use this referral code that's unique to this group. Uh, and it's a little weird. So Emily will put it in the chat and we can also kind of share it via a link afterwards. But you can see this try.turn.travel. Um, you'll get $10 off your first billing, whether you choose annual or monthly. You'll get a 14 day free trial automatically. And so that'll be an additional $10 off your first billing. And um, so definitely take advantage of that. The other thing that you can actually stack on top of that is we will pay you to learn turn. So we have this thing called turn and learn. You can click on learn in the top toolbar and we will actually give you up to $35 for completing the training on turn. It takes maybe a couple hours. And so if you stack these two things together, you can get over a month of turn for free. Uh, actually, it's pretty close to two months when you think about these things working together. So I uh, wanted to highlight that right away. I know that it, this can kind of feel like a little bit daunting to learn a new system. And so we've tried to make it really kind of financially easy to really get in, learn turn and see if it's going to be a good fit for your business. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, jump in to the demo. And I'm actually going to start where a lot of your clients might start, which is on your website. So this is a uh, example website. Turn does not currently have a website builder. So I want to be clear about that up front, but uh, we do integrate with websites, make it super easy to link from your website to Turn. And that's what we're going to demonstrate right now. So this is a sample website that we've created. Um, maybe at one of your clients is looking through your blog content and you know they see this diving cenotes in Tulum and they're like, wow, this looks, this looks really cool. Like I'd love to do this trip. Um, and so they go up to this book a trip tab and now they're going to start filling out one of your forms. Now, as soon as we click on this, let's get started link, we'll be in turn. And we're gonna be walking through the turn forms that you have the ability to create. 
I'll show them first from a client perspective, and then I'll switch over and show how you can customize these forms completely to your needs. So this is going to be one example, but just know that this is a customizable workflow. So let's go ahead. I'm going to click on let's get started. And like I said, it's going to bring you right over to this form. Um, this is actually kind of a cool example of autosave happening here. So you'll notice that we have automatically recognized that they this client started a form submission but didn't finish it. And so we save that information for them. If you were starting from scratch, obviously you could just fill out these fields, um, but it's a cool example. We'll show this on the back end as well. This is almost kind of like a the marketing term is like abandoned cart recovery or something crazy like that. But what's really cool is that for most uh, most advisors, they tell us that we don't know if a client started filling out our prospects, started filling out a form on our website and then just dropped off. They're like, I, you know, didn't finish it. Maybe it's too long. They got distracted. Turn lets you actually re-engage with them. And I'll show you that in a minute. But let's go ahead and click on next. Um, so we filled that out. We can now say, you know, we're, we're interested in uh, planning a trip to um, Mexico or a cruise for the Martin family. And uh, again, these are going to be customizable. So we could start to say, do, do you have specific dates that we're looking for? Maybe we're thinking about you know, May 11th through the 18th. And so we can start to give these dates uh, for the trip. So we'll fill that out. And we could, you know, again, this is actually an example of a custom question that you can ask. So you can customize these forms. You don't have to ask this question, but you can if you want to. You can really kind of customize this for what works for you. And so we'll use this as an opportunity just to share a little bit of context and what we're thinking about for this trip. So uh, want to go somewhere tropical, oops, tropical, thinking in all-inclusive, but maybe a cruise. Would love some options. Um, so we could go ahead and again, you can customize this. You can decide, do you want trip budget, what these ranges should be? And we've really tried to, again, sweat the details, figure out how do we build these things in a way that works for your workflow. And one of the things that we saw as we were researching this was that a lot of advisors, they, they want to kind of provide space for as many travelers as we're going to be on the trip. But historically, that was kind of hard because the fields weren't dynamic. And so you see these things like, you know, 10, 10 travelers long, and it's just like fill out however many you have. And it's a little bit awkward from a client perspective. In turn, it's like you can add the traveler details and you can add additional travelers literally as easy as clicking that. You can remove that. So these forms are dynamic and they are designed for travel. Now, the last thing that I, I'm going to highlight on this page is this little box. It's super easy to, to miss. But I actually think this one line does more to, to show you how Turn thinks about building products for you than almost anything else we're going to look at today. And it's like, wow, that's a bold claim for a terms and conditions button. So the, the easy way to have built this was just like put in an ability to have a custom checkbox, which we do have, and then say, link your terms and conditions from there. That's kind of the standard approach that other systems have, have taken. Uh, the challenge with that is it actually makes it really hard to enforce and prove the paper trail necessary to track the opt in around the terms and conditions. And so, with Turn, we wanted to help you protect your business. And so, you'll notice that in your settings, you actually have a way that you can copy and paste your terms and conditions directly into Turn. And what that does is if I click on this link, you get this beautiful hosted place for your terms and conditions. Now, behind the scenes, Turn is tracking your versions automatically. So if you update these, we're not only tracking that a client checked the box on this form, but we're tracking what version of their terms did they actually agree to. Now, this all kind of seems like, okay, like, so what? And I, I love to bring this to life with the story uh, that one of our earliest partners, Andrew, he was testing this feature. Um, he just wrote in last week and shared this example. He's like, I've been using the terms and conditions since late last year when you rolled it out. And you know it's been great. I love tracking it. Um, but I actually had to use it for the first time. I had a client who filed the chargeback, and I had to basically you know, kind of prove and fight this chargeback. And uh, we're kind of going back and forth. Fortunately, in the terms and conditions, he has the language that's necessary to protect him. But the client recognized that the terms and conditions had been updated since she did the trip request form. And so she came back and said, I, I want to see the exact terms and conditions that I agreed to in order to like you know to, to have proof that I actually agreed to what you say I'm agreeing to. Now if you think about that for a second, how many of you could actually like say, yeah, I know I have a record of the exact terms and conditions that a client agreed to so I could fight that chargeback. It, historically the answer is like most. Andrew said I wouldn't have been able to do this before. But because we have that versioning, Andrew is able to print out the exact version of the terms and conditions that the client agreed to and ultimately won the chargeback dispute. 
And so it's just those little details that we really try and focus on to help protect advisors business. And again, that's where like the technology should come alongside you to help support that. So just one kind of cool example, it's been neat to see this actually making an impact now that it's been, been live for a couple months. Last page on the form, is schedulers. So this is something else that we heard. It's like, yeah, a lot of times like on the trip request form, I want to be able to like schedule this, or I want to be able to have a scheduler that's integrated with my calendar, that's managing my availability. And I think it was something like 70% of advisors told us they actually pay extra for a dedicated calendaring solution. And so we said, well, can we just bake that directly into turn? So in your forms or anywhere else around turn, you can send a link to the schedule. You can pop that open and turn will automatically look at your availability. So it looks at your calendar availability and it lets you actually schedule meetings directly with your clients right through the turn platform. And it's integrated with forms. So it's going to sync over those details. We can add additional guests. You've got a lot of customization around how you actually want to manage that. And if we click on submit, it'll now bring us back to the form and show that we just booked a meeting. Both you and the client just got a calendar invitation saying that you, you know, with the, all the details of the event. And again, this is integrated into Turn. There's no extra charge for this. And so you can use this as a part of that system. And we'll click on Submit. And we just went through kind of the client experience. Again, that's a customizable flow. So you get to decide if it looks anything like that for you. But I think it brings to life just some of the kind of functionality of the, the Turn forms. I also am a big fan of this page uh, in that it, I think it embodies a lot of how we think about designing technology to help you wow and impress your clients. Just those little animations, those kind of like little premium touches that really communicate the value that you're providing, uh, we think is important. And, and that kind of personality that your technology kind of brings in a non-obtrusive way, we think really helps kind of solidify that perception that your clients have when working with you. So we spend a lot of time on those details as well. Okay. So what we'll do now, that again, kind of the workflow that we just went through there, I know it was a little quick. We just looked at the website. We went through kind of a client request form. Let's now look at your view as an advisor. We'll look at the library and how you manage those forms. And then we'll go through the process of actually building a trip together. Um, so I'm going to toggle over to the this tab where I have turn pulled up. This is the dashboard or the kind of trip overview page that greets you as an advisor when you log in. And we're going to go ahead and look at this library tab. Now, before I click on that, Emily, just quick check in. Any kind of questions or themes that we should make sure to address based on what we've covered so far? Are we still continuing as usual? Um, yeah, I, there's a few questions on the calendar scheduler. Um, just to reiterate, we the goal is that if you are using other tools, you don't have to use those. You don't have to pay for those anymore. And you can just use Turn's integrated calendar scheduler. So you can add it to forms, but you can also just send the link outside of turn to schedule meetings with travelers, with other other folks, team members, even um, the goal is you don't have to pay for another tool. And that's kind of like the goal of turn in a nutshell, I feel like it's like, you know, one one system that can power the entire business is the goal. And, you know, we're, we're still building towards that in some ways, but uh, but that's certainly the goal. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to click on the library tab to get started with. We're going to come back to this page here in, in just a minute, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and click on the, the library tab here. And this is where uh, we'll be able to, to start to see the details associated with that. So if I click on library, um, over on the left-hand side, uh, you can see these kind of different categories. So we have itinerary templates. Um, so if you have a you know, trip to Europe that you reuse quite a bit as kind of your core template, you can just drag and drop that in. We'll show that an example in a minute. Uh, you can also use that for things like days. Like if you have a standard day that you always start from in Paris, for example, you can just like build that out as an itinerary template and you'll be able to drag and drop it onto the, the board. And we'll show what that means in a minute. I know it's kind of hard to visualize since we haven't looked at the board yet. But if we click in on activities, this is the same thing, but you can do it at the activity level. We'll show this actually in a minute when we start building out a trip together, um, how you can start to do things like include you know, your diving, you know, your different activities that you may be reusing, hotel transfers or hotels. You can reuse this content and uh, in a pretty easy way. And so we'll show that in a minute. Uh, but just kind of mentally keep in mind that we've got these saved activities that we've created in our library. And then on the left-hand side, we have the forms tab. So as the name suggests, this is where you manage your forms within turn. And you can see that we actually have two different examples of forms within the system today. So if we click in on the request a, a trip form, this is what we just looked at on the, um, on the client side. And so if we click in on this, we'll be able to see uh, what the form builder actually looks like in turn. And so throughout turn, we really focus on this kind of drag and drop ease of use. And so if you scroll down here, you can see that we've got the ability to do multiple pages. We saw that as we click through that form. 
Uh, and if I wanted to add maybe some additional information here, I could just drag an item over and add it in. And in the case of an info block, I've got this full rich text experience where I could start to add formatting, heading, custom text, quotes, even embedding tables. Uh, one of my favorite things is that you can also actually like embed YouTube videos. So if you had like a YouTube video, or actually we just rolled out support for a Loom video where you wanted to kind of like frame why you're having clients fill out this form in a personalized way, you could embed that directly in the, this kind of rich text field. So it's like really smart, uh, quite, quite modern from that perspective. And if we want to delete the question, we can do that by deleting it. So I just wanted to kind of bring to life briefly here that you've got that flexibility, things like schedulers and terms and conditions, you can drag and drop over. And so if we scroll down, we'll see here's that terms and conditions automatically populated for us. We don't have to do anything, just drag it over to the form and it's done. And turn is going to manage that compliance for you. And then you drag over the scheduler, same thing, it's here. And you can decide if it's required or not. And so this is an example of how you can really build out customized forms. And in turn, you can have as many forms as you want. Now, I wanted to show very quickly this responses tab. This is where you can see the responses within the form builder. And just to bring to life a little bit of what I was talking about earlier in terms of those partial responses, um, this has actually been uh, kind of kind of interesting and fun as we've rolled it out, is that there are a lot of clients that we see that will start to engage with a form. Maybe they're on the website, or maybe they see it on social media, they start filling out a trip request form. They may only get to the first name, last name, email field, and they're like, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bail out of that, right? Like I, I'm not actually gonna request that trip. And historically, advisors have never known about that. They've never known that there's this person who started the form but never completed the entire thing because it doesn't show up as a submitted form. But now in turn, you can actually click in and see these incomplete forms and see, like, oh, in this case, they only got through the first two questions. And then they, they dropped out. They closed out of the form. They left your website, whatever it may be. Now you could shoot them a personal note. Just be like, hey, notice you started filling out a form. You know, just wanted to check in and see if there's anything that you know I could do to help you kind of plan your next dream getaway. And we think that that's going to be a huge kind of re-engagement loop where you can start to establish those kind of connections in a way that's never really been possible before. So kind of a cool, uh, cool example. So that's forms. Uh, I'll highlight maybe one more thing actually is back on the forms tab. So again, library forms, we do have three different types of forms. And so if I just look at this new client form, a new trip request form is going to automatically create a new trip in turn. We'll show that here in just a moment. Um, but the new client form will actually automatically populate your CRM with the details of that client. And so you can add activities and interests, addresses, phone numbers. You can see the list here. I won't read through every single one of them. And it's going to automatically write those details to your CRM record. And so you can start to send each traveler on the trip this like form, just like, hey, just want to make sure I can really personalize your trip in a way that works for you. If you can just complete this form and collect loyalty numbers, allergies, preferences, it will then automatically write to this contacts tab where you have a full CRM to keep track of all the details of your clients. And so if I just click on contacts here, again, this form can write directly to your contacts. We also have a way where you can import contacts from your existing systems using kind of AI. Uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll just pull up uh, a contact here just to show you what this CRM looks like. Uh, this is a travel specific CRM. So you've got this kind of about page. You can see that we've had these tabs along the top. The about page is going to have everything from custom tags you've added, relationships, emergency contacts, uh, how to contact them, preferences that they have, key information, including known traveler numbers, passport data. Again, you can passport, parse an image of US passports directly in. Loyalty programs, I think, I think this is another, just one of those little details that we try and pay attention to, where you know, the easy way to do loyalty programs would just be like custom text box, enter in the loyalty number. But again, it doesn't have that kind of like premium feel, it makes your data kind of messy, it's hard to keep track of. So in turn, we actually import over 600 loyalty programs. You start typing, typing in United, you get United Manage Plus, and we're importing the levels. So for every one of those 600 people, there's multiple levels, we're importing those. And then of course you can put the ID number. Um, and so you have that saved on the client record, easily copyable. So you can enter that into your, uh, your uh, booking or whatever it may be. All right, uh, one thing I'll just very quickly highlight, document tab, you've got these tabs along the top. So if you have documents that you wanna store, somebody actually just asked this in our Facebook group, like is there a way that I can store documents like a, a flight voucher or credits at the contact level? This is where you do that. You can upload those documents and store them there. You have this activity tab where it's gonna show you everything that that contact has done with you, including, and this is how Andrew, by the way, was able to prove that that contact agreed to the, the terms and conditions, is you have every single time they filled out one of your terms and conditions, it's highlighted here for you. 
So you've got that kind of record and that paper trail. Notes, free text, you can add whatever you want here. It's a great place to take notes on calls and kind of keep track of that context. You also see this on the trips tab. You can see tasks, historical trips that they've taken, and you can even message the client directly through Term. So full featured CRM combines with forms to really help you manage kind of the relationships within Turn. David, what we'll do can I now? interrupt you really quick? Yes, go ahead. Perfect. So sorry. There was a really good question around email automation and forms. Um, could you just share how we're thinking about automation quickly, just because yes. it's launching soon. <laughs> launching soon. So this is, I think, going to be um, really like the, uh, I mean, there's there's more like that, but like when I think about the last major piece that is required for people to be able to truly consolidate like legacy CRMs and legacy itinerary builders. It's this automation and communication. Um, and we will be launching that on March 7th. We're having our next product webinar and it's going to be really sweet. We, uh, I'm a little biased, but like obviously kind of all the table stakes stuff, things like task lists, automating the application of task lists based on things like trip statuses and kind of these different triggers throughout the system, uh, messages that you can start to send. But where this is going to be really uh, take it to the next level is we're looking at how do you how do you combine a direct connection to an advisor's inbox? So a lot of people out there, like a lot of other systems, will use DNS masking and kind of all these like sort of hacky ways to like either send from an advisor's email and then they'll use things like BCC or CC, like these custom emails to get it into the system. And it's quite quite fragile back and forth. We're gonna be directly integrating with all the major email systems. So you can start to connect that. Why does that matter? Well, you start to combine that with things like artificial intelligence and you can drastically cut down on the manual data entry that advisors have to do. Imagine you get a advisor or a supplier confirmation email sent to you. Instead of taking that, downloading it, uploading it to turn, entering in all the data, we imagine a world where you just like click a button and it parses out all the details for you and automatically updates it and is available to your clients. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in detail on March 7th. So you'll definitely want to check that out if that kind of automation uh, messaging and you know, I, I think we'll be actually bringing AI to advisors in a way that's never been done before on that webinar. So uh, definitely check that out. You can register on our website. If you go to events, um, you can find the details there. I also put the link in the chat. For anyone who Perfect. Yeah. All right, let's plan a trip. We've talked a lot about stuff that sits around trips, which I think is super important, but let's actually pick up where we left off on that client submission and start to actually put together a proposal for them. And one of the things you'll notice in this inbound column, this is the trip that was automatically created for us when the client submitted that form. And so again, there's a little bit of that automation kind of baked into turn today already. We had a new trip request form, that new trip request form automatically created this trip. And so I can go ahead and click in on this and you'll start to see the, the trip details. One thing you'll notice right away is that the person who submitted the form automatically is brought into the trip as well as all those CRM details. And so we have the kind of immediate context here. We could start to change this. So if we click on manage travelers, we can control things like what permissions should they have. And I can start to add you know, additional people to this trip just by searching for them through my CRM and automatically adding them. And again, there's a lot of flexibility here. So if you have you know, a family or maybe a multi-gen trip where you want some people to have access to pricing and credit card authorization, but you want you know, everybody to be able to access the itinerary on their mobile app, you can say like, I don't want you know, the, the kids maybe to have access to all the pricing and all the approvals, but I want them to be able to have it on their phone so they can see what's going on. So you have the ability to really customize those permissions. Um, and so I'll save that. And again, for every person that you bring in here, you've got, uh, got the details. I am very visual. I like to see the pretty pictures on the board view um, that we just saw. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll add a photo and I'm going to search for Tulum. This is Turns integrated uh, photo library. There's about 4 million royalty-free photos that you can search through. And so we could go ahead and we can add uh, a photo there. You can also change things like the currency. So if anybody is not in the US, you should know that you can change your default currency to any major currency around the world. And for every single activity in turn, you can set a currency on it as well. And we will convert from the activity currency to the default currency for you. So uh, we've built international support basically into turn from the beginning because a lot of your trips are probably not necessarily in the US. So uh, we have really been thoughtful about that from the beginning. Okay, so that's the overview tab. Let's actually lay out a trip. 
And to do that, I'm going to go over to the itinerary tab on the left hand side. This is where you can click on itinerary and you'll be brought to this board view. You'll notice that we use this board view kind of throughout turn. And anytime you see this board view, it's a drag and drop experience. So we didn't talk about it on the trips tab, but you had those different columns. Those columns are customizable. You can define those columns and you can drag and drop trips to the left or right as they move through your process. So that's customizable. There's also a list view there. If you prefer a list view over a board view, you've got that option. On the trip tab under the itinerary, this is where we can now start to lay out the trip by dragging and dropping. So the first thing I like to do is add my lodging. So we'll go ahead and just drag over a lodging item and we just let go of it. And it's automatically going to pop up the lodging form. We could enter in the details here manually, or we could search from through the hotel database that uh, Turn has built in. So I'm going to say I'm going to search for the Hilton Tulum. And if we go ahead and select that, we'll see that it's not only in the hotel database, but it's one of the 500,000 properties that we have media for. And so it's going to automatically bring in that rich text. It's going to bring in the media, which if we toggle over to the media tab, we can see that we've got dozens of photos here that we can start to select from. And we could start to customize these. We could say, actually, you know, I know this is going to be, this family is really into food. So let's lean into the dining experience. Everyone loves a good pool photo. So we'll add that. And then I can change which one do I want to be primary or not. So maybe I think this pool photo is a better primary photo. I'll update that. And this will dictate how it shows up on the proposal and itinerary. A couple other things you can do on these activities. In the case of lodging, you can define room assignments. You could break down multiple rooms. Uh, we could add those here. We can drag and drop the travelers through each room, add a room description, including uploading things like images. You could link to videos here if you wanted to. Uh, we looked at media. So if we go over to documents, this is where uh, maybe less so, less common in the proposal phase, but one of the things that we really believe at turn is that you shouldn't have this kind of disjointed process where it's like, okay, I've got the proposal and then I convert it to an itinerary. And like, it should just flow with your process, right? So, you know, maybe when you're doing a proposal, you don't have documents, but as soon as you move this to booked, you want to upload the document with the confirmation or the voucher. Like you can just do that, right? And you're not doing double data entry. Uh, so I'll go over to booking and pricing here, and this is where we'll start to set up the really cool uh, set up credit card authorization. When we were researching credit card authorization, what we heard was that kind of the status quo is, you know, you you get approval on the itinerary, and then you go and you build this like super manual invoice, you send the invoice. And because that's manual, what we realized was that there's a lot of compliance steps that actually were, were often lost in there. And so we're like, well, how do we eliminate this double data entry? How do we make it more magical from a client experience? So it feels almost like online checkout more than like a bunch of back and forth and documents and, and really kind of heavy. Um, and how do we help the advisor level up the overall compliance all at the same time? And so that's what we tried to build here. With uh, lodging, we can go ahead and we can start to say, you know, maybe this is a, a, a flat rate for the week. And you'll notice that we have this payment schedule. I can say that actually you're gonna pay this at the hotel. This is a guarantee, not a pay up front. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna specify the supplier, which we're booking through. We're gonna book this directly through hidden hotels and resorts. In that case, it's automatically gonna pull up the, the um, previously entered terms and conditions and cancellation policy. So we don't have to re-enter that. And now you'll notice that this status is automatically updated for ready for authorization. So we don't have to do anything else. There's nothing required to manually make an invoice. I'm going to show you what this looks like on the client side here in just a moment. But before we do that, I'm going to go back to the itinerary and I'm going to add a couple more things. First of all, I'm going to add a flight. So again, in turn, we just drag and drop over. So we drag over to the board, add a flight. And I'll say that we're going to be taking that new United flight from Chicago to Tulum. So we'll go ahead and search that. Another example here of it just evolving with you as you start to plan. When you first start this process, you're probably not going to have seat numbers. But when you book it, you can just add the seat numbers again without having to re-enter the data, without having to do anything over again. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and while we're here, I'll add the return flight on 1951. And that is actually going to be on the 18th. And we'll search that. And there we go. It's brought in those flights. Now, uh, I could start to add booking and pricing here as well. Just to highlight on this tab, booking and pricing, you have these kind of different payment structures. So I could say that this is actually going to be per person, and these flights are $751 per person. Turn's going to automatically do that math for us. And now all I have to do to get this authorization ready is say that this is supplied by United Airlines, and we're now ready to authorize that as well. All right. So you can start to see how quick this, this is. We've really designed this to try and be pretty efficient. So now we've got flights. Uh, I'm going to add just a couple more items from my library just to really kind of fill out this trip. 
And again, we looked at the library at the very beginning when we came into the advisor view. And so to add library items to a trip, all I have to do is go ahead and drag a library item over and let go of it. And it's going to bring up that library for me. And so these are, you know, kind of originally we thought they were divers. So we'll go ahead and add some, some diving activities here. And I'll add maybe just a couple of these, uh, the, Co the Cozumel. And so all I'm doing here is just dragging over from my activity library, letting go and selecting from that library some of these options. Now, uh, I'll add one more. I'll add, we've got this kind of saved transfer. So this is an example of like, if you're using the same transfer company over and over again, just create this kind of a new shell activity, drop it in and you're now good to go. You can add on the activity everything that you need for it to be credit card authorization ready. So you can see in this case, I've set on the activity kind of standard price point for that. Of course, I could click in and edit that uh, as well. So that's how we can start to lay out this itinerary. Uh, and I will show you what this looks like in just a moment. Now, before I do that, I want you to think back to the form that we submitted as the client and what we put into that little box, the box where we're kind of sharing some context for the activity or for the trip. We said, you know, we're thinking that we'd love to do an all-inclusive, which is what we just kind of built out here. But we're also thinking maybe a cruise. We're not sure. We'd love to see some options. And what we heard from advisors is that that can be like, maybe not a frustrating, but definitely a time-consuming message to get, right? Where it's like, oh, okay, like now I'm going to have to build out two or three different itineraries or like, or I just send them a quick email, but it doesn't have that kind of flair that really drives the sale. What do I do? And so within turn, we've actually built the, the option to give options to your clients. And you can do this on the activity level just by dragging over an option block. That's perfect for here are two or three different activities that you may want to do today. Here are two or three different hotels that you may want to choose from. And as soon as you put that option block in, the itinerary and the proposals become dynamic. Your clients can actually make a decision right on the itinerary. It's really cool. But what we heard was that that doesn't really work for that scenario where the client's like, well, but maybe I want this trip, but maybe I want a totally different trip. Like, what do I, how do I do that? And so that's where we have itinerary options built in. You'll notice that there's this add option right within the trip. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on add option. I could add additional details here, but for now, I'm just going to click on create itinerary. And since they said maybe they were thinking about a cruise, I'm going to go to this cruise library item and just drag this over. And so if we drag over this cruise library item, turn is going to automatically pop up. We've got a database of 45,000 cruise itineraries that are synced in automatically. Uh, and so we could start to look through here. And maybe I think that given their kind of interest in snorkeling and diving and things, maybe like, I, you know, I really think that uh, a stop in Roatan is going to be a good fit for them. So I'm going to filter down to that port. You can filter down by port, ship, supplier, cruise type. You can see really robust filters here. And now maybe this icon of the seas, given the recent inaugural sailing, sounds like something that we want to kind of quote. So I'll just go ahead and click on add to itinerary. And so you'll see that turn automatically builds out this, this kind of board based on all the stops and all the details. And so we're, we're almost ready to send this to our clients. There's one thing I'm going to tweak first, which is the name of this first option. So I'm going to say that this is the Riviera, whoops, Riviera Maya by land. And we'll go ahead and update that. Okay. So what did we just do? There's a lot of clicking and dragging, but like in, Basically 10 minutes, we just laid out an FIT trip to Riviera Maya, taking advantage of the library, of our hotel database, of our flight integration. Um, and we were able to build that totally custom trip out fairly quickly. And then we also added a second a totally different itinerary, including our cruise item that our clients can now start to choose from. So I'm going to go up to the right hand side here and click on publish. You'll notice that there's kind of this like little flashing red indicator that there are unpublished changes. I will go ahead and click on that. And it will now prompt me to be able to send these details to my travelers. I can decide if I want to email it, or I may just want to copy the link and send it to it that way. But in this case, I'll go ahead and click on send. And just like that, we sent the itinerary to our travelers. Now, in a real world scenario, it's probably not something that you just like build out and then send. You'd probably be using this preview tab, which would automatically bring up this preview of the itinerary. So just know that you can iterate on it before you send it. You can see what it looks like. But since we're in demo world and we want to show you kind of this experience, um, I'm going to go ahead now and switch over to the client portal. Now, this is something else that Turn offers as a client portal. Your clients can log in on our mobile app. And they can also log in uh, and create an account directly on Turn. And when they do that, they'll see something that looks like this. 
So when they log in, they can see a list of all their trips. They can see their past trips as well as their upcoming trips. And if I go ahead and I refresh this, you'll notice that that new trip pops up, uh, which is Mexico or a cruise for the Martin family. Again, you're starting to really see the flow and how things just progress through turn. Client filled out a form. Form then automatically creates trip. We lay out the trip with a couple options. Automatically shows up on the client portal. The client can now click in on this and start to see these different options. With your face, your branding highlighted here, we can start to scroll down. We can see these different options. Maybe this you know, kind of cruise catches our eye, so we click in on this itinerary. Keep in mind, all we did on this itinerary was drag over a cruise item to turn, automatically bringing in this branding, automatically showing us this kind of detail about the cruise line. If you're selling cruises, we think turn. there's no better system out there than turn, um, automatically bringing in all this content. Details about the ship. We can see all 350 decks on the icon of the seas. Slight exaggeration, right? But like, yeah, there's a lot of them. And uh, we can see the, all the dining information. Every ship is going to have these details that are brought over from that sink. Uh, so this is really quite compelling. Uh, and the advisor, can, or excuse me, the client can start to scroll through and see these details. And of course, you can add additional content, short excursions, that information. But maybe in this case, the client's like, ah, that seems a little bit much, uh, a little bit, we're looking for a little bit more of a low key vibe. And so they go back to the trip options and they check out the Riviera Maya by land. And so we click in on this. Again, you've got this you know, kind of beautiful itinerary that you have uh, the ability to kind of lay out really clean. We can start to see, you know, it click in on each of these and start to see the details, high resolution photos, uh, really starting to, to kind of explore this and see the details associated with these itineraries. Here's our diving really like laid out in a way that's easy to understand and that your clients will love. Uh, we have this overview tab as well that's kind of interactive. And then of course, pricing where they can start to see pricing. There's a lot of flexibility behind the scenes. We won't necessarily go into all the detail right now, but you can create packages and lay this out in a way that works for you. And so once the client has said, yep, this is where we wanna go, I can go ahead and click on approve itinerary. I can provide any additional feedback that I wanted to, to the advisor here. Uh, and then I can go ahead and click on approve. Now, normally what would happen in you know, kind of um, in the previous systems is that we we heard from advisors is like you'd click on approve like we said then it's like okay cool like client approved the itinerary now I have to build the invoice and so you go and build the invoice to get the permission to use the credit card and we're like it's just like not the expectation that clients have especially you know, the 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 clients that are like used to online shopping and this kind of seamless experience and so why should authorization have to feel so much harder for the advisor and for the client there's just so much friction involved in that process today. And so we fixed that. So now when I click on approve, you'll notice that right away, there's this new authorized payments button that comes up. And so I can go ahead and now that I've approved that, I can click on authorize and I get this you know, comprehensive overview of everything that we're authorizing. It's calling out when something is a guarantee. So in this case, what we heard from advisors was that like there can be confusion. It's like, I thought I authorized that, but they were really authorizing to pay it at the hotel, but it looks like they were authorizing it at the time. And so clients would show up to the hotel and call the advisor all upset because they'd be like, I already paid for this. And it's like, no, it was a guarantee. So we just made it super clear. This is a guarantee. Um, things like the cancellation policy. This is something, I actually have a blog post I'm hoping to publish out later, uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow or Wednesday which goes into details of like credit card uh, compliance and PCI and, and chargebacks and all the risk associated with that. Cause I, I just feel like that's misunderstood. But one of the things that has changed uh, with the pandemic is that most card companies need proof that your clients saw the cancellation policy uh, in order to successfully overturn a chargeback. And so we just like baked that in. You can select the cancellation policy on the activity and it shows up here and, and as well as the supplier terms and conditions. We're collecting then the card information and we're collecting opt-in both to this kind of magic language as the travel lawyer that we work with um, as Clint calls it, as well as opt-in to your terms and conditions and we're collecting an e-signature. And what's really cool about this, going back to the chargeback piece, is that this automatically creates a PDF that is sent to both you and the traveler uh, after authorization that has all the key information necessary 
um, we believe to really stand up to a chargeback. So if God forbid one of your clients charges back something that you use their card to pay for, as long as you're using turn in the intended way, as long as you've entered in all the information, you know, we feel like you're going to have a really good shot at, at kind of overturning that chargeback and kind of getting off the hook for that. So again, coming soon, blog post that really digs into that uh, for anybody who may not be super comfortable with like, what is a chargeback? And how does it even work? Like we're going to be breaking all that down because we did a lot of research to get to this point. Um, and what's I think really cool is that there's like behind the scenes, all this work that's gone into helping you protect your business. But from a client perspective, it just feels easy. Like you click on authorized payments, you review the details, you can add or use a saved card here. So we clicked on this, we can add or use a saved card. And it's like, yep, all this looks good. I type in my name, I submit authorization and boom, I'm done. I just went from taking an itinerary with two totally different vacation options, selected the one I wanted, gave authorization, condensing what could have been days, if not weeks of back and forth into a minute, right? And it feels so easy and so premium and such a great client experience. So super excited about that. But now let's pick up where we left off. Let's go back to your view as an advisor and look at how you actually use this information. So again, I'm going to switch windows. I'm going to go back to your view as an advisor um, on the same trip. If I refresh, so again, this is the page that we left. I'm just going to refresh the page. Note these statuses, proposing, proposing. You had two options that you presented to your clients. I refresh now that they made a decision. Boom, approved, rejected. We still have the old itinerary. We know it was rejected, but now we can see this is an approved state. And if I go over to the left under authorizations, I can see all these activities are now authorized. And this is something else that's kind of a little bit of a gotcha. PCI restrictions say that you can only have an authorization for up to 30 days. And so Turn is going to keep track of now, when is this authorized? When does it expire? It's going to manage that level for you. And as long as you've got this in an authorized state, you can click in on any of these activities and the detail about the card is right here. So we can click on view card details. This is a fake card, by the way. Um, and so we could go ahead and now enter those details on the supplier website. Once we've paid that, we can click on mark as paid and keep track of that for ourselves. Uh, coming out most likely later this week is partial payments and installment plans. So we're adding to that as well. So if you want to be able to allow clients to do partial payments or you want to offer installments, uh, you'll be able to do that as well. So that is uh, coming very, very soon, which we're excited about. There is a lot uh, here. I'll just very quickly and then we'll open it up for questions in the last 10 minutes or so. A couple other things I'll highlight on the left hand side. Um, we uh, have the pricing tab. So if you're doing packages and things like that, you can actually build those out here. I'm not going to go into all the details of that. We've got a turn and learn on that. By the way, you access turn and learn up here, click on turn and learn. Uh, and again, if you are in your free, or actually it's true forever, or, but like if you are in a free trial and you go through all seven turn and learn courses, it'll take you maybe a couple hours to do that, but you'll get a $35 credit towards your first turn bill or whatever your next turn bill is. Um, so like I said, you can stack that with the referral code bonus that you'll get for attending this demo and have a $45 credit for turn, which is over a month of free turn access. You add that 14 day trial on that, you can basically have turn well past the automation and AI uh, webinar um, to really kind of get comfortable with and see how it works with your business. So wanted to highlight that. Uh, but it's not just authorization that we talked about. We have the ability to do insurance. This was something that we thought was going to be a super easy Feature it turned out to be really complicated, but we're incredibly proud of it. If you are offering uh, a quoting travel insurance for your clients, you can add those here, um, add insurance options. And we, uh, again, have done a lot here to help it help you kind of walk that line of getting the acknowledgement that travel insurance is available, you know, and sort of like, and then quoting travel insurance, showing clients how to get travel insurance, authorizing it if necessary, if you want to provide the service of actually buying it for them but not positioning yourself as an insurance salesperson. So again, we worked really closely with travel industry lawyers. Uh, and if you want to use this, just add the, the kind of quotes here, click on insurance is ready, and it will now show up in the authorization flow seamlessly for your clients. We have the ability to track service fees. So if you're charging design or planning fees, you can come in here, add fees. Uh, this is uh, exclusively for professional service fees, design fees, whatever you want to call them. It's not for travel right now. We are looking at ways that we can help if you are kind of behaving more of a tour operator. We're looking at that for probably like early summer. Um, but for now, if you're doing this kind of design fees, those can be collected here that uses Stripe as the back end. Trips have documents as well. You can upload documents on the activity or at the kind of trip level. You can see all the messages associated with the trip. And again, we can take unstructured notes. So if we want to just like take rough notes, that's here. 
And then again, I think these activities are really cool. You saw them before on the contacts, but you have this kind of full audit log of everything that's been happening on the trip. So all the way back to the very beginning of the demo when we submitted that form 33 minutes ago to create this trip initially. And the fact that you know Philip agreed to the terms and conditions as a part of that, but then I added these travelers. I you know, um, created a new itinerary. I published the trip for the first time. Like I've got this full audit log of how the trip has evolved over time, which can be super helpful if clients are uh, you ever coming back and be like, oh, like I didn't approve that itinerary. You can be like, well, actually, you did. You approved it on um, you know this date, you know, on ten minutes ago in this case, right? So like you can start to see that full audit log of how the trip has evolved. All right, that was a lot. Uh, we moved fast through that. Um, I will, any questions that folks have, Emily, kind of open it up for, for you to maybe help kind of facilitate that. Yeah, um, so really quickly, there was a question. There are a few questions around providing lodging options. So you did show two different like high level itinerary options, but can you just show how to create option blocks within one itinerary? Yeah, so for sure. This one's for you. <laughs> so, if I go ahead and uh, we looked at the kind of full itineraries, like you said, but let's drag in an option block here. So I'm just going to drag in this option block over on the left. And if you let go of it, it now gives us the opportunity to name this. So I'll call it lodging, oops, lodging options. You could add other context here. Uh, but if I go back to the full itinerary, I can now move in different options. So I can drag in the lodging that I already had, and I can drag in another lodging item. Um, and kind of let go of that and now enter in the details here. So I don't know, I'll just pick one of these. Um, and so we can start to, to see that I'll add, you know, some other pricing here and you could really start to kind of build this out right in a way. So this is just a very quick example, but you can see now I've got two lodging items that show up here. I could do this for activities, by the way, I could do this for any content type, um, transportation, lodging, flights. And what happens is that when I click on preview, and I'll just preview this here, uh, this becomes interactive. And so you can start to see here are the different lodging items um, that are associated with that. Again, I could click in as a client and start to see the details of one. It looks like this didn't have this random hotel that I picked didn't have uh, media, but you could add media, you could add a description here. And uh, I could go ahead as a client now, and I can actually select that as a preference. I'm previewing this, but like what would happen is as soon as they select that as a preference, it would then update on your side that they've selected this one. It's up to you to remove the other one. So you're not going to automatically lose all the other options. But when you're ready and a, a selection has been made, um, you'll be able to click in on the option block here, click on edit, and you'll actually be able to see it'll show up something like this. And then you can convert that to a single activity. So again, your client would review the itinerary. They'd select you know, Hilton Tulum Riviera Maya. You'd see this view, so you'd see the selection has been made. In this case, it would show you your client, and then you can say, "Okay, I'm going to go ahead and convert that to a single activity." And just like that, it cleans up and kind of resolves the option block for you. And so now we go back to that, and the option block's gone. And so it's like this really cool kind of flow where you can start to present your clients with options. They can make a decision. Boom, you convert it. That's the decision that's been made. Um, and I don't think it'll happen right now because we weren't actually doing that as the client, but that will show up in your activity as well. They made a decision on that option block. So you can have that record. Jody, did that help? No. So where I was getting lost was when you were doing multiple rooms, for, like multiple room options for a hotel, they were mm. adding the cost to the rooms. So I don't know if I was doing something wrong, both myself and another agent were looking at that because mostly I'll do like offer uh, junior suite ocean view or junior suite swim up or something like that. So we want to offer different rooms with pricing. Yeah, okay. So right now the option blocks at the activity level, not at the, the kind of room level. So the way that we recommend that, and I think eventually we'll add in potentially like room options as like a, a kind of dedicated experience but for now if we said like junior suite uh you put in a description here this is a beautiful swim up or no not swim up we'll just say junior suite um booking pricing for that is we'll leave it at the 5840 what will what i recommend and kind of the best practice for room options is we then drag over the option block we can say your choice of room and then you could add some notes here, by the way, of like summarizing the three different rooms. I bring in the hotel and then you can actually just 
duplicate it. Actually, sometimes it's easier to duplicate it outside the option block. Um, so I'll drag that out, duplicate activity. That will then bring me to this and I could just rename this. Swim up suite, suite, update the room here and the pricing. Uh, you also could, if you didn't want to use the room assignment, you could actually just do it on the general info. But we could say this is like 7580. And then what they would see, and then put both of those in the option block. Oops. There okay, so you can't do room assignments and put both of them under room assignments because that adds it up together, correct? Um, it only adds it up together if you do the per room pricing. So if you... Uh, if I open up one of these activities, go to this. So it will should only factor room into the price if you click on per room. And so if we click on per room, then it would basically multiply, like you set the price for each room. Mm -hmm. If we just added another room to flat rate, it's not gonna, it's not gonna dictate the pricing. So it just depends on how you've set up the pricing structure, um, if it will factor okay. that in or not. Okay, thanks. But then this is kind of what that would look like. I, I, you know, again, I'd probably customize the title of the first one, but it'd be like swim up suite. And then you could change the description. So it's like, you know, do that. So usually the kind of order of operations is like first get the hotel locked in. You could do an option block there and then you could zero in on rooms. Um, like I said, I know that's kind of the room option is like the natural next step for option blocks. So we will add that eventually. It just hasn't been something we built yet. So this is kind of the current current flow. Okay, David, there were a few questions around groups. So maybe if you could just share our product roadmap and kind of what we're thinking about after we launch automation, that would be awesome. Yeah. So like I said, right now through um, kind of March 7th, we are really focused and it'll probably be mid-March because we usually have a week or two where we kind of like are iterating on feedback of the new features. But now through mid-March, we're really focused on automation, messaging, and AI. Really like how do we help advisors scale uh, their day-to-day -day workflows. Um, so that'll be kind of launched and released uh, by mid-March. Well, most of it will be live by March 7th. We'll then kind of transition our focus into um, kind of teams and collaboration. This will be kind of the, the first time that we start to introduce a concept of teams, a lightweight agency product, the ability to collaborate as advisors with um, uh, both with other advisors sharing content like library items, but also with virtual assistants, with DMCs and other suppliers. We're like really thinking through like how do we make uh, kind of planning travel a, a team sport, if you will. Um, so that'll be probably through kind of mid-April. And uh, again, I think it's going to be pretty pretty exciting on how that really starts to unlock a new era of efficiency. We'll then transition over kind of mid-April into May to think of it, thinking about groups. And that's where I think... Um, groups and tour operator support are, are actually kind of interlinked in our mind. That'll probably be like May, June, our, our focus for both of those months. And so it's how do we help manage uh, things like landing pages so that you can like automatically create trips or like apply trip templates based on people filling out a form, right? Like really thinking through how do you manage the splitting of finances when you have multiple people on a trip that want to pay? Really, there's like a ton of detail that goes into groups, as as all of you know. Uh, and so that'll be a major focus there. And then we'll also be thinking about ways that we can streamline the the kind of movement of money is something we've heard can be quite challenging, both for those people that operate like a tour operator and for people who are doing groups and need to be able to kind of consolidate funds and pay out funds and manage the kind of cash flow associated with that. I think there's a lot of uh, cool ways that we can use kind of some modern financial tech to, to help with that. So that is kind of the roadmap through, I'll call it like June, July of this year. Teams, collaboration, and AI groups uh, all are major focus areas for us. All right. Well, I know we're at time. Um, so maybe just closing with a, a, a heartfelt thank you. So appreciate the opportunity to kind of present to this group. Uh, if there are additional questions, um, please feel free to, to reach out. Uh, Emily just shared her calendar link in the chat. Uh, we're happy to, to grab some time one-on-one -on -one and kind of answer questions or walk through things. Um, and then we'll also uh, hopefully find a way to kind of send out a link the, to the referral code so that you've got access to, to that, that $10 off. And like I said, you can stack that with Turn and Learn to really get up to a month and a half of uh, free turn access. So 
I appreciate you all taking the time on this Monday morning. And uh, we hope to, to be partnered with many of you soon. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, I think this really opened a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of great ideas. And I know that this is just a start and you're going to be adding so much more on. So um, everyone, I highly recommend getting one-on-one uh, -on -one with Emily because she definitely does go over a lot more. Uh, I am going to have another one with her after I finish my turn and learn, because I feel like <laughs> I have too many questions that are probably answered in the turn and learn. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, everyone have a great day. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye.